Until today, nobody had the necessary computing power and the necessary data to hack humanity. Even if the Soviet KGB or the Spanish Inquisition followed you around everywhere, 24 hours a day, watching everything you do, listening to everything you say, still, they didn't have the computing power and the biological knowledge necessary to make sense of what was happening inside your body and brain and to understand how you feel and what you think and what you want. But this is now changing because of two simultaneous revolutions. On the one hand, advances in computer science and especially the rise of machine learning and AI are giving us the necessary computing power. And at the same time, advances in biology, and especially in brain science, are giving us the necessary understanding, biological understanding. You can really summarize 150 years of biological research since Charles Darwin in three words. Organisms are algorithms. This is the big insight of the modern life sciences, that organisms, whether viruses or bananas or humans, they are really just biochemical algorithms. And we are learning how to decipher these algorithms. Now, when the two revolutions merge, when the infotech revolution merges with the biotech revolution, what you get is the ability to hack human beings. And maybe the most important invention for the merger of infotech and biotech is the biometric sensor that translates biochemical processes in the body and the brain into electronic signals that a computer can store and analyze. And once you have enough such biometric information, and enough computing power, you can create algorithms that know me better than I know myself. And humans really don't know themselves very well. This is why algorithms have a real chance of getting to know ourselves better. We don't really know ourselves. To give an example, when I was 21, I finally realized that I was gay after living for several years in denial. And this is not exceptional. A lot of gay men live in denial for many years. They don't know something very important about themselves. Now imagine the situation in 10 or 20 years when an algorithm can tell any teenager exactly where he or she is on the gay straight spectrum and even how malleable this position is. The algorithm tracks your eye movements, your blood pressure, your brain activity, and tells you who you are. Now maybe you personally wouldn't like to make use of such an algorithm, but maybe you find yourself in some boring birthday party of somebody from your class at school, and one of your friends has this wonderful idea that I've just heard about this cool new algorithm that tells you your sexual orientation, and wouldn't it be very a lot of fun if everybody just takes turns testing themselves on this algorithm as everybody else is watching and commenting, what would you do? Would you just walk away? And even if you walk away, and even if you keep hiding from your classmates or from yourself, you will not be able to hide from Amazon and Alibaba and the secret police. As you surf the internet, as you watch videos or check your social feed, the algorithms will be monitoring your eye movements, your blood pressure, your brain activity, and they will know. They could tell Coca-Cola that if you want to sell this person some fuzzy, sugary drink, don't use the advertisement with the shirtless girl. Use the advertisement with the shirtless guy. You wouldn't even know that this was happening, but they will know, and this information will be worth billions. Once we have algorithms that can understand me better than I understand myself, 
They could predict my desires, manipulate my emotions, and even take decisions on my behalf.